Jesus said uh, in Mark chapter 9 and uh, verse 23, all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible if you can believe. Now, if I were to ask you a question like, are all things possible to God? Sure. Jesus said that in Matthew 19. With God, nothing is impossible. By the way, how many of you know, just in passing, in what context did God say, would Jesus say nothing is impossible? Is it jumping 10 feet, high jump record, or... Long jump, 35 feet. Is that what he was saying or? What was he talking about? Making a billion dollars or rupees or a trillion rupees? In what context did he say, with God nothing is impossible? I'll tell you in Matthew 19. He told a rich young ruler, go and sell all that you have. Um, and come and follow me. He was not willing to do that. And then Jesus turned to his disciples and said in verse 23, it's very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples heard this. They were astonished. You mean someone who's rich can't enter God's kingdom? Then who can be saved? Now, you see, the world is full of people who like to act poor. If I were to ask you privately, are you rich? I think most of you will say, no, 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 I'm not rich, I'm poor. This is the hypocrisy that fills Christians. If I were to ask a person in the slums in Bangalore, uh, what do you think of all these people who meet in CFC? Are they rich or poor? <laughs> He'll say, Brother Zach, are you joking? Every single one of them is rich. But you don't believe that, do you? <laughs> That's your pride. But you know what the disciples felt? We're, we're rich. You know, I've got fishing, I've got a net, and I've got, some, I've got a home, I've got various things. They were not hypocrites and humbugs like a lot of people today. And that's why they got salvation. They were not hypocrites, you know, like a lot of people, oh, I'm brother, I'm poor, I'm not rich. Go to God and say, I'm rich, Lord. You have blessed me so fantastically. And in that context, you will see how difficult it is for you to be saved and enter God's kingdom. You don't think so, right? Because you say, oh, well, I don't, that verse doesn't apply to me. When you read a verse like, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, you skip over that verse and say, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. I want to tell you, every single one of you, it does apply to you. Go and ask anybody who lives in the slum in Bangalore if that verse doesn't apply to you. It does. But when was the last time you admitted it? Did you ever in your life admit that you're a rich man? Tell me honestly, did you ever once in your life admit that you were a rich person? No, the devil fooled you with your hypocrisy. Admit it today and say, Lord, I'm a rich person. I'm talking about earthly things. I'm not talking about spiritual things. Don't spiritualize it. I'm talking about in earthly material things. You are a rich person. And it is difficult for you to enter the kingdom of God. These poor disciples didn't say, oh, thank God, that doesn't apply to us. We are poor. They were not hypocrites. They may have met many weaknesses, but they were not humbugs and hypocrites. They said, Lord, that's, that, that applies to us also. We are also rich compared to a lot of these beggars. Think of blind Bartimaeus. And Peter says, I am far richer than blind Bartimaeus. Look at the beggars on the street. Aren't you richer than them? It was their honesty that saved them and it is your dishonesty and hypocrisy that leaves you in your sin unsaved. Be, go to God and say, Lord, I'm a rich man and you said it is very difficult for rich people to enter the kingdom of God and it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than to, for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Then the disciples said, who can be saved? Have you ever said that, Lord? Can I be saved, Lord? I'm a rich man. Can I be saved? When was the last time or even once in your life that you ever went to God and said that? You see how the devils fool so many Christians? Oh, you're poor. You're poor. Hypocrites. Go to God and say, Lord, I'm not poor. I'm rich. I look at every beggar and every person in the slum and say, I'm a fantastic. I'm a millionaire compared to them. How can I be saved? And Jesus said, 
This is impossible for you. This is impossible for you. But with God, all things are possible. God can even save a rich person like you. If you will acknowledge it first, that you're rich. I did. <laughs> and he saved me. I tell you, he has saved me. And I experience the joy of it continuously. I'm a very, very happy person. When I see so many miserable faces, I say, I wonder whether these people are saved or not. Salvation brings joy. And perhaps you're not saved because you never admitted that you're a rich person. You kept on fooling yourself. I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor. Expecting other people to give you handouts, etc. Dear brother, but it's not only God. It says all things are possible to the one who believes. Faith is such an important thing. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's another thing we have stressed and stressed and stressed in this church. Not faith for material things first, but faith for spiritual riches. Faith, first of all, for forgiveness of sins. And Jesus has forgiven him when he says, I will not remember your sins anymore. He means it. I believe it. I don't live... I mean, there's tremendous sorrow in my life for all the wicked things I did in my life, but there's no, um, you know, haunting guilt. Oh, fear. Can I come before God? Can I come? Uh, will the devil get a hold of me because of what I did 20 years ago or what I did yesterday? If I have confessed, forsaken, walked in the light, of course, I can take advantage of God's mercy, but the Bible says there's forgiveness with him that he may be feared. Psalm 130. So, faith, first of all, that my sins are forgiven, that my past is blotted out, that even in all eternity there's no record of what I did because I repented and I turned and I turned wholeheartedly to God and I was ruthlessly, 100% honest. I admitted my hypocrisy by pretending to be poor when I was rich. I admitted all the hypocrisy in my life. Honest, ruthlessly honest. God loves honest people. He never helps humbugs and deceivers and hypocrites. Be honest with God. That's the first thing. And then faith that whatever God has promised in his word, I will get. You can't get a son when you're 100 years old like Abraham because God didn't promise it to you. No. No. You can't pull down the walls of a city like God promised Joshua. But I'll tell you what you can do, what he has promised to you. Romans 6, 14. Sin will not rule over you. That's not for Abraham. That's for you and me. Very clear. Why go to Deuteronomy and say he'll make you rich? Why go to those promises given to Israel? Why not come to the promises given to the church? Sin will not rule over you. He has broken down the dividing wall so that he can make you one. One with your wife. One with your husband, one with your brothers and sisters. Those are the promises I want. And I want to believe that it is possible. It will never be possible if I don't believe. You hear a word in the pulpit that no sin will rule over you and say, Ah, oh, well, it applies to some people, but it doesn't apply to me. Well, I tell you, it doesn't apply to you because you don't believe it. Or you say, well, I've been a slave to this for so long, even Almighty God can't deliver it. I agree. Almighty God, God cannot deliver you because of your unbelief. You say, oh, but this is such a, my anger, brother. You don't know my grandfather was like that and my father was like that and I just inherited it. Okay, your son will also inherit it. Your daughter will, your grandchildren will inherit it. I tell you, your great-grandchildren will inherit it unless they break out of this wretched cycle of unbelief and say, no, I'm going to trust God. I don't care if all my ancestors were angry. I'm not going to be angry. Because the Bible says, sin will not rule over you. Believe it. There are worse sinners than you who have overcome sin just because they believed. God's promise is true. Abraham honored God by saying it may be impossible for other hundred-year-old men to get children, but not for me because you promised me something. And I say, Lord, there may be a million things that are impossible, but sin ruling over me. <laughs> impossible because you promise sin will not rule over me. No sin. No judgmental spirit is going to rule over me because that's sin. No fear of demons. No. Demons cannot touch me. No black magic can touch you. 
Believe. If you believe, you can overcome everything. You can be an overcomer. Who is he that overcomes the world but the one who believes? It says in 1 John 5, verse 3 to 5. He who believes, the one who has faith, 